All right, today we're going to create a video um, showing students how to make a simple um, assembly with two pieces. Um, this is the one of the pieces they have to make. Here it is. And then what students are going to have to do is create this second piece here that assembles in the top. All right, and this is just a simple video showing you how to put these two together. All right, so what I'm going to do so I'm going to do this just like um, the instructions say for my students to do it. So I'm going to pick new. I'm going to pick assembly. And the title I asked them to name it in this current version is... Whoop. You can name it whatever you want, but MS-102 Islet Plate Assembly. So I'm going to hit OK. Here's my assembly. I'm going to turn on all my planes like everyone else would have. All right, and I'm going to assemble my first piece and show you a couple little tricks here. So assemble my piece. Here's my eyelet plate. All right, the piece that your assembly is going to show up in purple until it's fully constrained. Um, so what I'm going to do, and if you're wondering how I'm going to do that, the first thing that's going to happen is it's going to assemble it just right in the default, somewhere where your coordinate systems are kind of near each other. Now let me show you a few tricks. All right, so first off, if you hold Control and Alt, okay, and then while you're holding Control and Alt, click down the right mouse button and drag, you'll be able to move it inside the 3D space without moving the entire 3D space. In the same way, I could hold Control and Alt, click down the middle mouse button, and I can rotate this thing independently. Now, I'll mention that a few more times, so don't feel like you have to memorize it, but it is very handy for... You know, if let's say I need to rotate this around to assemble it this way to something, it'll be much easier to do so, all right? Especially if you have a big, big assembly, you don't want to keep rotating around all these pieces and all these assembly pieces. Okay, so whenever I'm assembling my first piece, all right, and a lot of people make this mistake where they come up here and they go, all right, I'm just going to fix it, all right? That's a terrible way to assemble your base model. So here's what I do, okay? I like to put the planes together. All right. If I have a reason that something is a basis of how something goes together, then I should probably model it so that the datum planes cross through there. In this piece, our basis was this top corner. So I'm going to assemble my right plane to the right plane. All right. You can also access these, by the way, um, by just hitting this little arrow over here. And then you'll be able to see the right and the right and you could put them together but I like to do it with the planes I'm a very visual person so then I'll put the tops together by clicking the edges of them and while this is happening by the way it's creating new constraints for me now an important thing to remember is until a piece is constrained if it's the first time you're assembling it and you click um, different things it's gonna automatically create the constraints for you all right but Later on, I may need to add a new constraint where I would actually click new constraint. It's the exact same thing, but since this isn't defined yet, if I, as you can see, I have two right now, two coincident constraints. If I pick this and I pick this, it creates the constraint for me. So initially it's like, okay, these are far enough away. He must want a distance constraint. Well, I don't, all right? This is a bad way to do it. I, and don't be that person, by the way, everybody does this. It breaks my heart. Who puts in zero and goes, okay, it's in the right spot now. There's a problem with that because down the road, if you're making an assembly drawing, you're trying to indicate a distance or show a dimension. And let's say the person who assembled a hundred pieces put all these little zeros in here, you're gonna show your dimensions and all of a sudden there's gonna be zeros all over your view. So it's a bad way to do it. The better way to do it would be to go up here like I'm going to, hit the down arrow and go to coincident. It means zero, but now you don't have a zero dimension just hanging out there that Creo has to make sense of. All right, so now we're gonna hit okay. Because it's blue, I'm just going to middle click. It's a much faster way. I'll go back to my standard orientation. You can see all the datum planes adjusted to where the piece was. All right, now I'm going to bring my other piece in. I'm going to show you a couple ways to bring it in. So this is my top plate. My students have to actually do the deductive reasoning to figure out what this piece is. So I'm going to actually show it for a quick second. There's your hint. That's what it's supposed to look like. But when I assemble this, there's a couple ways I can do it, okay? If you're an experienced Creo user or Pro-E user, 
um, if you're as old as me and used it before it was called Creo. Um, you you probably understand this whole plane to plane flipping things that sort of stuff, all right? But if you're new to it, you probably want to orient things in the way that we're going to assemble them because this thing's going to assemble on top like this, all right? So let me show you both ways. So one way I could do it when I bring this thing in by default, I could pick my top surface. I could say it's going to assemble to this top surface. Now right now that lined up those two surfaces. I'm going to check that it's coincident. Good, all right? But I want to actually flip it over, right? So all I have to do is come up here and just hit the flip and it's going to flip it back. And now I can drag it around again. I can also click down the middle mouse button again, control alt, and then the middle mouse button. And I can rotate it now to get it in the orientation I want. But I'm going to leave it all messed up um, to make it a little harder. Now the next thing I'm going to do, based on how this piece goes together, there's a couple things I could do. I could assemble this surface to one of these surfaces but for me I really like round stuff all right if I have pins and holes I like to put those together because that's how I would assemble them in real life so I'm gonna pick this surface over here I could pick the axis I really like the surface and I'm gonna pick this surface and now it's gonna bring it right over there now notice this went orange right now but it's not actually constrained okay this is what I mean by sometimes you're going to have to create a new constraint over here because what Creo will do by default when you assemble a surface that controls it axially, meaning along the axis, and then assemble a cylinder inside of a hole, Creo is going to say, oh, you know what, that's kind of how we would assemble a bolt maybe. And a bolt, we don't care how it's oriented, turned around, okay, what angle it's at. So it's probably fine. So it says, I'm going to allow assumptions. If I turn it off, notice it goes purple again. I'm going to leave it on just to show you. So here's the problem a lot of people make. They go and assemble this and go, oh, no, now i got to put this over here. Okay? So then they pick this, but what does it do? It puts it inside of this hole, which is not what we want to do. All right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit New Constraint. Then I'm going to pick this surface and this surface. All right? Now we're assembled. And now when I hit OK this thing is assembled right on top. All right. Now I'm going to delete that and show you one other way you can do it. All right. So let's delete this. Let's bring it in again the way it did initially. So the top plate comes in here. Now I like to do this. If I have a big assembly with all sorts of stuff, let's say I'm putting bolts in along a little pattern or something like that. I like to get them oriented how I, how I want to assemble it. So I'm going to take this thing I'm going to rotate it around. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to hit Control and Alt, and I'm going to click on the right mouse button. I'm going to drag it over. Another way you can do it, they added this in Creo maybe three, two or three. You can use this little wheel thing, so you can rotate this around. If you're familiar with like Autodesk Maya, it's kind of similar to the Rotate tool. I can also grab these arrows and drag them around. All right, a lot of people like that. I like the Control Alt because I've been doing that since Pro E 2001. So we're going to hit control alt, we're going to drag it over, hit control alt again, hold it down, click down the middle mouse button, rotate this thing around the orientation you want. Now let's go assemble this again. I'm going to rotate around, pick my surface, rotate around, pick this surface. I'm going to say those are coincident. Okay. I'm going to go over here, I'm going to pick this surface, go over here, I'm going to pick this surface. All right. We can see it went orange again, but we know better than that now. All right. I'm going to hit new constraint. Now, there's a couple ways we could do this. All right. I could say this surface and this surface are parallel. That would assemble it properly. I don't like that personally, because if I know I have a piece that assembles with two holes, I want to know that the, down the road, if I make changes, I want Creo to tell me, hey, you know what? These holes don't line up anymore if I forget to change something. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit new constraint, I'm going to take that other pin, and I'm going to put it in this other hole. All right, just a personal preference thing, but honestly, it's going to save you a lot of time if you're a designer who designs a lot of stuff and makes some rapid prototyping changes. All right, and the last thing my students are going to have to do once they hit OK is they're now going to have to switch this thing to wireframe and send me some pictures to make sure I know that it actually goes together. All right.